No, I mean, if the camera was on me, you would have seen a very animated Liam in the dugout. Um, and it was, yeah, obviously frustrating. The in, like, uh, First off, I want to thank every, everyone who stood up and clapped and did all that. Uh, it definitely meant a lot both times when I was walking out to the bullpen and coming into the game. Uh, I want to thank Matt Dice for uh, stepping out and giving giving me time to go about doing that. That was um, I really appreciate. That. that was a huge sign of respect, and I, I very I really really appreciate that. Not so much the one at four point eight off the bat, but other than that, it's fine. Um, yeah, it was great being back out there, getting back, putting cleats on, um, running out, doing all that. Like I felt good, I felt strong, I felt comfortable out there. Uh, unfortunately for me, it just wasn't able to get the two strike pitch where I wanted to. And that was the, uh, unfortunately that was the bit for today. It was, uh, get ahead generally and then struggle to put them away. So that's, uh, there was some positives from like, from a purely baseball aspect, but there was uh, definitely some things to work on and we get back and be available and ready to go tomorrow. It was a lot easier tonight than I expected. Um, I think getting out there kind of, I did take a minute and step and look around the crowd and just, like soak it all in a little bit better than I had in Gwinnett that time. Uh, so getting out there and doing it that way was was great. Um, but yeah, well, it was a little bit easy to get those competitive juices flowing a little bit more. Um, I kept the first ball that I threw. I think it was something to, a little bit of a keepsake. I'd prefer to have it than and not need it than need it and want it and not have it. So uh, yeah, other than that, it was it was a little bit easy to get out there and then got a little mad once I gave up a runner and then kind of. Didn't, didn't make the pitches where I needed to, but unfortunately it is what it is. And uh, I look at it from a point of like, if I didn't give up two runs, that's a tight game and we're looking to continue playing and having a chance to win. Uh, and that's unfortunately where, where we're at right now. It seems, it seems fair to you to be focusing on the results of a baseball game, but this day in general, what was it like for you? I mean, we, we saw you get emotional during the check presentation and everything. If you, if you can not think about the baseball part of it for a second, what yeah. like? It was definitely emotional. There was a lot. There was a lot going on. It was um, nerve-wracking going out, being kind of available today, and having that go on. Um, it was humbling going out there and walking out there and and seeing the amount of people wearing my shirts, the uh, the amount of people having signs or flags or anything like that, the amount of people that were chanting when I came into the game. It's um, it was very humbling and and sobering moment for me because just realizing that like uh, the impact my wife and I have had around the city uh, with what we've been able to do it's um it's it's yeah it's it's an extremely an emotional time I mean uh, we're both very animated people as um, if anyone watching the game could have told um, but yeah we uh, it, it was it was a great feeling like walking around downtown like I parked and, and walked over to uh, to see my my, like see Christy and my wife, my parents over at uh, at uh, a place in three or four in the space of a hundred yards, saying good luck, congratulations, all this sort of stuff. So the outpouring of love, not only online and social media, but in person, has been huge. And I want to thank the city of Chicago for embracing us in this way. And uh, and hopefully we have, hopefully we have and can still continue to move forward and and uh, and represent this city well. Stepping out of the box, and you see the angels also applauding you in the dugout when you. Came yeah, I. Uh, I saw them and then tried to quickly glance away. Um, as I said in Gwinnett, I. It's great, and I re and I, I truly really appreciate everything. Um, but it's very hard to get into my right frame of mind, knowing that they're actually good people. So I have to trick myself into thinking that they're terrible and that they don't deserve to get anything. But uh, that's just the way I pitch, and that's the way the way I am. It's. Uh, yeah, you're always looking for a slight, always looking for an advantage, always looking for a chip on your shoulder of what they can do. But um, no, I'm very appreciative. Uh, Phil Nevin came up to me during uh, batting practice today and just had a chat and said, I'm glad to see me back. And hopefully I'm more of the 91, 93 range that I was my last batting in Charlotte rather than uh, <laughs> what I was in the uh, this stuff. But yeah, it's um, the, the outpouring of love from not only White Sox fans, but fans all over the game, different organizations. I know that uh, the Blue Jays had sent a video of saying congratulations on being back. And um, I want to thank uh, Jordan Romano, Matt Chapman, and Chris Bassett and the Blue Jays organization for sending that out. That, uh, that really hit home that it's not just guys here. It's guys all around the league. There's uh, Jameson Tyone and Trey Mancini both text me today among a plethora of other people. But 
Like uh, Jameson was one of the ones who just texted me and was like, hey, look, so happy you're back. Let's do something. Let's let's get together and let's do a joint thing at a hospital. Let's do something and, and move forward and we can do some good in this town. And that's uh, that speaks to where he's at. And um, I'm all on board, so hopefully we can uh, do something good with that. Jordan, Cheryl. What was it like the week before with your teammates getting ready to prepare? And did it feel like it was normal for you? Uh, relatively normal. It was a little different walking out than I'm used to. Uh, a little bit more clapping and uh, video and all that sort of stuff. But uh, it was it was great being out there. I did my normal routine. I sit next to TJ, the security guard. I sit out there with Hass, and we. I look at go over the video. I go over the, the the media notes for that day and all this sort of stuff. So it was relatively normal. Um, obviously, this year it's a little different. We got a, a bullpen with a room now, so it's a that's a new addition. But uh, for the most part, it was I just doing my normal thing, my normal routine, and. It was definitely nice being out there, being able to kind of uh, converse a little and and uh, and get back into the uh, the sledging, as the Aussies call it, in the bullpen, which was nice. It was a good uh, good change of pace to get out there and actually like feel like I'm part of the. Not that I didn't feel like I was part of the team, but feel like I actually can contribute today, and that's uh, it, it. Definitely changes when you're wearing cleats instead of uh, turfs. You know, to watch the video that the White Sox produced yesterday. Just why did that? How did that hit you? Uh, yeah, I, I have. I haven't been outwardly emotional very often throughout this journey, uh, and that was one of the ones that got me. So I, uh, yeah, I made sure to go up and 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 thank and hug uh, Vaughn, Cease, and Giolito for for being a part of that and taking the time out of their day to to film that. Um, the White Sox organization has been fantastic throughout this entire journey. Uh, it's um, I don't think in a not, like not too many organizations would kind of let me go about the interesting rehab assignments post the way I did it, where going out to Gwinnett, going to Charlotte, realizing I'm sucking, staying an extra day, being like, hey, I need to get out of here. I'm getting worse. Coming out here, throwing uh, three live VPs and getting back into it after not having a spring training. I don't think that's uh, – I don't think that like too many organizations would be willing to go that route, and I want to thank them for letting me go through that, knowing that I know – well, I think I know – how I'm going to react and respond to things and, and watching the process. And um, obviously tonight was, from a pure stuff point of view, the best I felt the entire time. I think I was, what, five to seven. So uh, everything came out well. Uh, just overcooked sliders, and that was the problem. I just uh, I got a little too excited with my breaking stuff. And unfortunately, when I'm not quite locating as well as I want to, that uh, it takes its toll. Do you want to go right back to the closer's role, or are you okay with just whatever they – want you to do. For I'll them. never be okay with mediocrity. I'll never be okay with not being at the back end of the bullpen. But in saying that, I need to earn it. It's not something that I will just, I don't want handouts. Like I need to earn it. I need to work my, I need to earn it. The guys have been throwing well out there, but at the end of the day, I, that, that, that's mine. But as I said, I need to earn it. There's no, there's no freebies. There's no handouts. I, I will get there and I will earn it myself. Yeah, it's a little bit more, uh, a little bit more dry, th like dry mouth than uh, than normal. But that could be also just because I haven't really run in from a bullpen too often, and that's a lot longer than I thought. Um, but yeah, it's it's pretty much normal. Like getting on the mound, everything was coming out fine. Uh, almost killed Sebi Savala with a my warm up curveball because he wasn't wearing a mask, and that was terrifying for I think both of us. Uh, but other than that, I feel great. Like physically, I feel fine. Um, now it's just. There's no, there's no other way to really build it other than games. They're like that game strength, it's the being on your legs, moving, pushing around, and that's usually what spring training's for. And it's, um, yeah, now I've got a chance to to do it a little bit more. But as I said, this is, uh, it's been a nice kind of comeback here with they being able to throw to uh, Luis Sierra and uh, Miguel Gonzalez, that bullpen catches, having uh, Kurt Hasser and Ethan Katz's eyes on me, having. Uh, now um, Rod and Aaron and BJ and Ross and all the video guys being able to kind of go over things that, and they've seen me for the past several years. They've seen what I'm doing and this, the little nuances that sometimes the data picks up, but quite often it's just the old school eyes being on you that can really tell the difference. Maybe we'll just keep a plan with you. Can you go another next day or do you have to have space between? No, God, there's no space. I wouldn't have come back if I needed space. This, is, uh, this isn't a kind of rehab while in the big leagues kind of thing. This is uh, when I came back, I was planning on being available for these next three days. And uh, if the phone rings tomorrow for me, the phone rings tomorrow and I'll be ready. You know, you talk about getting, feel like you're getting 
do any worse in AAA, not who came up here to rehab? What, what kind of change, what started to pick up uh, as we were doing you know, live swing games? Um, so, honestly, like, I know, don't get me wrong, I'm not talking bad about uh, Daniel Z or anything like that down there. I was putting too much on myself and trying to generate too much. And when you, for me specifically, when I try and generate, I tend to get too low into my leg, my back leg, and jump forward. And instead of jumping forward and driving forward, I was jumping up. And so jumping up, losing everything out of my back hip, and then kind of opening up a little too early. So I had no kind of rotation going through. But there was a, there was a couple little tweaks that we were making. And that's, that's why I said it's, it's, it's really hard to not see a person in real life or consistently on a, da on a daily basis and be able to pick out those little things. And that's something that I think uh, throwing to Louis, throwing to Gonzo, throwing in front of Katz and Haas were, were kind of four big people I wanted to get in front of. And I, I don't know whether it was just – it could have just been coming back and the comfortability of being able to kind of be here on the mound that I've been using for the last two years. Um, I think it made everything a little easier and it came back relatively naturally, but because I'd been out of whack for the week and a half ish that will, that I was gone, it kind of, it had that little bit of a build up to get back to where I needed to be. How do you just deal physically? I mean, you had chemotherapy just two months ago. I mean, you've been pitching a long time. How do you feel physically prepared for the rest of your career? Yeah. I mean, I've got a little bit more of a boiler on me than I'm used to, but other than that, um, no, physically I feel fine. Obviously, there's still little aches and pains, but I mean, that's, I, I don't feel as bad as I did at the end of the last year. If you remember those last few outings, the two in San Diego and the one at home against Minnesota, like I was practically limping and not being able to move my right arm after those outings. So everything feels a heck of a lot better than I did last year, that's for sure. It's just not quite coming out of 99 yet. <laughs> but that'll come. I, know, I have no doubt of that. Now it's just making sure I uh, throw strikes in my breaking ball. And the good thing today was I still got six whiffs. Um, but the... I didn't have the killer instinct that I'm used to with two strikes. Usually when I get two strikes, it's a, it's a no, it's a pretty much foregone conclusion. I'm punching him out in my eyes, at least. And then I just didn't quite have that today. It'll come. Appreciate it, guys.